Hey, this is Craig from DroneFlyers.com. Well, the Phantom 3s have finally started shipping. We received this one around three weeks ago. Had time to put it through some of its paces. Those of you who are just receiving them might want to have an idea of how to set it up and have a few uh, hints and tips on getting the most out of it. So uh, this is the one with the gold decals. Of course, it's the Phantom 3 Professional capable of 4K. Right now, DJI is only shipping them with a single battery. They've delayed orders a little bit uh, with the two batteries. They are taking orders for spare batteries. We have some placed. We haven't gotten them yet. Well, hopefully this will give you more time to become familiar with your craft before you start flying it. So when you receive it in the box, you'll receive the body uh, along with the smart battery in it, uh, the four propellers, uh, the remote, and the remote has your smartphone or tablet holder, and the battery charger. The first thing you're going to want to do um, while you're reading the manual and getting things ready is charge up both your remote controller and your smart battery. You'll notice that the battery charger has on it two different ends. The round one is for connecting the remote and it charges a LiPo battery inside the remote. It does take a couple hours to charge that fully up. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. You don't want to charge both at the same time. Even though there's no, no way of stopping you, uh, DJI recommends charge one when the transmitter is fully charged. Uh, then you can remove the smart battery and charge it. If you do have a Phantom 2 you'll notice that the connector on the Phantom 3 does not fit quite as well. Uh, I've been in touch with DJI and they say this is just the way it is. You'll notice it'll pull off easier. One small tip, there's various products that you can put on gold contacts which keep them from getting corroded as easily. This one is called Deoxit and a number of people recommend it. It comes in a small little tube. You can get it at Amazon or some hardware stores. And you can take a Q-tip and put a tiny bit of it on the two larger spade pins and on the four small telemetry pins here. Okay, so next you're going to want to put your propellers on. Uh, as with most of the other Phantoms, the propeller hubs are color-coded. There's silver and there's black, and they go on the corresponding uh, motor threads. These hubs are not metal like the Phantom 2, they're made of a composite. Now when these props come in the box, they have a piece of cellophane wrapped around the center and it's a little bit of a pain to get it off. Take yourself a scissors and cut it off. Um, so these are the composite props. It's easy enough to put them on. Whichever way they screw on is fine. No, they'll screw on a different way. But a very important tip with the Phantom 3, doesn't apply as much with the other units, is that once you put those props on, snug them up, hold that motor and turn them in the direction that they tighten up and give them a good snug. The reason you do this is that the Phantom 3 has active braking. What that means is when you slow down the motors or try to stop it in midair when it's moving forward, it actually uh, puts a brake, an electronic brake we'll call it, onto those motors and stops them with quite a bit of force. If you didn't screw those propellers on tight enough, it would be possible for them to spin back off. And that's the reason that, that they use the composite hubs and it's also the reason that you're going to want to tighten them especially hand tight. When it comes time to remove the props, it can be a little bit harder because flying tightens them on there a little bit. Also, you forget what direction you spun them on. So what you want to do is remember that the leading edge or the higher edge of the propellers, which is right here, you want to unscrew it in that same direction. So I'm going to hold the motor here and higher edge of the propeller, turn, and there you go. They come off. Okay, so now it's time to set up your remote, what we used to call the transmitter, but what they're calling the remote now. There's a holder for your phone or tablet, which just hinges around. There's the two antennas, light bridge antennas. In general, your antennas are going to be positioned in a way similar to this. 
The smartphone or tablet holder is designed to handle anything from the smaller phones up to a very large tablet and it's adjusted by just hitting that little button on the side there and you can see that top part goes out to accept fairly large tablets. Now when you're using a smaller device it's a little bit tricky when you first look at it you can't figure out how to get the device in there um, but the key here is that you fold out these two little things right here. In my case I have a Moto X a uh, small Android device. You want to make sure when you put your device in here that none of the switches are hit by any of the... So I'm putting the switches down and I'm offsetting the unit a little bit so that the switches aren't hit by those holders. So the Android device is in there and in the box with your Phantom there is a USB cable that's designed to hook from your smart device to the USB that's on the rear of the remote. Now if you have an iOS unit, an, an Apple unit, you're going to have to use one of your lightning cords that you have to hook up your iPhone or iPad to the back of the remote. Okay, so now at this point everything's assembled. You'll notice I have a little lanyard for my neck for the remote. It's very difficult to hold this, especially with a heavier tablet or anything in it without a lanyard, so you're going to definitely want to get one at your local hobby shop or online before you get started. Okay, the next step in getting this thing into the air is to download the DJI Pilot app into your Android or iOS device. If you have an iOS device, you can do it through the App Store. If you have an Android device, you can do it through Google Play, although DJI has lately started putting the newest version of their app on their own website. So make sure if you do it through Google Play, make sure it's the same version number of the app or else go to the DJI website direct and you can download and install the Android app directly from there. Okay, so once you have the DJI Pilot app downloaded and everything's charged up, you're ready to go. The uh, first Phantoms that ship come without a lens cover, but I purchased one online here, a 3D printed one, so I'm going to remove that. You won't have to do that if you have a unit that came without it. And um, what you're going to want to do before we start this up is remove the gimbal lock. That's this plastic piece. And the gimbal will hang free. If this was just came out of the shipping box, there's going to be a tiny piece of white foam here uh, behind the gimbal also as part of the packing, and you'll definitely want to remove that. And the next thing you do is you turn on the remote before you turn on your Phantom. The remote is turned on by pressing the power button once and then pressing it again. It will come up with a noise and some of the lights will light on it. In this case it has the red light on it, meaning it's not currently bound to the Phantom. Always turn the remote on previous to turning your Phantom on. And when you go to turn them off, in the exact opposite order. Always turn the Phantom off first before you turn the remote off. So once this is on, we can now turn on the Phantom. Same way, press once, press again. The Phantom will make its startup tone. The gimbal will go through some initial calibration. Okay, so at this point, we want to open up the DJI Pilot app on our smart device. And if you're just getting started, once you open up the Pilot app, it's going to ask you to register, uh, where you'll register your craft and sign in uh, to DJI. You'll use the same email and password that you used either to buy the unit, or if you're already on DJI's forums, uh, or if you're registered with DJI with any other craft. If you're not, you'll have to register uh, before you can use your Phantom. Once you've registered the DJI Pilot app, it's almost time to take your maiden voyage. Take your Phantom 3 out to a large open field. Follow the instructions for calibrating the compass. Then take your maiden flight. I hope you learned something from this video. There's a lot more information about the new Phantom 3 on our website at DroneFlyers.com. Happy flying!